Hi there, I'm Mike. Whatever for you today is Star Wars The Black Series Night of Ren. Honestly, it's been since 2015 that I wanted one of these guys and it's just crazy to actually have one in my hand, well, a box for it in my hand now. Go ahead and take a look at a picture of him while I read the bio on the back of the box. An enclave of masked warriors wielding distinct weapons for ranged and close quarters combat, the Knights of Ren are elite, fearsome enforcers of Kylo Ren. That is one very long sentence that could have been like three sentences, Hasbro. Who writes this? Seriously, that's just, that's too much for one sentence. There's not one period in all of that, just, just commas. Here I have the Knight of Ren in my hand, and although these are labeled Knight of Ren, each of these has their own name. This one is Vikral, or Vikral. He first made his appearance very briefly in The Force Awakens in a Force vision that Rey had. According to Wikipedia, the Knights of Ren are all Force sensitive, dark side adepts. They were named for a character whose name was just Ren, but then when Ben Solo turned to the dark side, Snoke gifted him the name Kylo Ren and the rest of the Knights of Ren to be his personal bodyguards. Although, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't really need them. He's never really, he's never really seen with them, except for like one scene in, in Rise of Skywalker. But then they have one cool scene on the plateau on Pasana where they're standing all cool and menacing like while the camera spins around them Michael Bay style. That was cool for a bit. And then they have one that one brief uh, fight scene at the climax of, of the movie. That was that was cool too. That's uh that's kinda about it. Knights of Ren. Cool. So let's move on to the review proper with the looks. Does he look like he does in the, the movies. Each of the members of the Knights of Ren have their own distinct look and also weapon. Like the Ninja Turtles, you can tell them apart by just some basic visuals. Apparently during pre-production, this guy's name was just Grenade Face because of the fact that his face looks like a grenade. Clever. But I guess that's kind of the crux of the issue. Star Wars is filled with characters who have hardly no screen time. In fact, some of them, if you don't have the widescreen version of the movie, have no screen time. I'm not even talking about the sequel trilogy. I'm talking about the original trilogy. If you go look at Jabba's Palace or the Cantina, it's littered with aliens who have years of crafted backstories from people just milking the Star Wars franchise. Effent Mon, who is just some dude in the background that's cut off of the non-widescreen version of Return of the Jedi. And so if you, if you didn't have the widescreen, you wouldn't even know what we're talking about. It's this guy, by the way. Or you have a whole line at Star Wars Celebration of people cosplaying the ice cream maker guy. These guys are nobodies in the movie. None of them get speaking lines. They're just there to fill out space. And they're people obsessed with these characters. This character looks cool. He honestly deserves no less than any of that love in the fandom. He looks awesome. I don't care that he's not in the movie that much. So I'm gonna give him the full point for looks. Knights of Ren, go. Let's move on to his accessories. He only has two, so it shouldn't take too long to get through. Number one, his main accessory is called a Frick Scythe. It's this staffy thing back here. It's, a, it's basically a vibro scythe, which means that it uses some sort of electrical sonic pulse thing to generate a slicing material. Apparently, it's very sharp. Don't, don't touch it. The scythe here is actually rendered in an incredible amount of detail. It has a great silver paint with like a paint wash over it to make it look worn. Although we've never really seen him swing it more than once in the movie, you can definitely tell by the wear on the weapon that he's no stranger to using it. The scythe fits well in his left hand or in both hands if you want to. Not really his right hand because it is molded to hold a gun. And there's no place to store it because this isn't really the type of weapon that you store, I guess. His second weapon is this custom blaster that according to Wikipedia, he only uses for emergencies. It's really more of the scythe guy, but he has a blaster if he needs it. The blaster, much like the scythe, has a lot of molded detail on it with that same silver paint job with the dry brushing over it. It actually is a pretty cool looking blaster. It fits well into his right hand, and if you finagle it, it fits into the blaster holster on his right hand side. That being said, this thing is probably the most inconvenient holster I've ever 
seen in my life. I can get it in there, but you kind of have to shove it in the bottom and push it down as far as it goes and then sort of just bend the top over. It's not practical in any sense of the word. In fact, it's downright annoying, but it looks fine holstered and it looks good in his hand, whichever way you want to display it. Other than that, I mean, I honestly don't know what else he could have come with. Obviously, I always say alternate hands, sure. Blaster effects, why not? Maybe a little electricity thing for the scythe to make it look like it's going, but he doesn't come with much, and the holster thing kind of bugs me, so I'm gonna give it a 0.75, just a little bit of a ding. Next, let's move on to his articulation. How does he move? Can you pose him well? Let's take a look. The Knight of Ren has a double jointed neck, one at the base of the skull, one at the base of the shoulders. He can get a crazy amount of movement here. It also moves forward that far, back that far. He has a very slight butterfly joint at the shoulder. It moves out that far, all the way around. He has a single jointed elbow that moves way more than 90 degrees. It also has a swivel. He has a hinge at the wrist, as well as a swivel. This wrist hinges this way. He has more of a waist joint than a torso joint, and it gives a pretty good range of movement. It moves forward that far, back that far. His leg can move forward that far. Moving it back is hindered by his molded skirt. He has an upper thigh rotation, a single jointed hinge at the knee, as well as a rotation at the knee. He has a hinge at the ankle, as well as a rocker. With that being the Knight of Ren's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. So there's so much good going on here. First, his head. Again, he's got that double jointed neck thing going on. So he has an incredible amount of movement forwards, backwards, side to side. He can pretty much do it all. Next, his arms. Not only do they move out really well, but they do have that shoulder butterfly joint. So he can get a lot of great poses because of that. His torso also has a wide range of movement, side to side, backwards, front. You can do a lot there as well. The downside to his articulation comes to his lower half. His legs are hindered by the molded skirt around them. I feel like, much like Chirrut Imwe from Rogue One, Hasbro should have done the soft goods on the lower half and the hard plastic on the upper half so that he doesn't have that hindrance. I still feel like they could have put the holster on there. I feel like everything would have been the same, but his legs wouldn't have been as hindered. Next are his knees. Or I, would, I wouldn't say lack thereof. He still has knees. But instead of being the normal double jointed knees that literally almost every Black Series figure has, I can only think of one off the top of my head that's had a, a knee like this, and that's the Ray from The Force Awakens. I think number two in the whole phase three line, where it's a single jointed leg, it just kind of bends back, uh, and it does have a swivel. So you do get a little bit of an extra movement there, but I feel like on this character, you could have just given him a double jointed leg. I don't know why they didn't do it. I, and I don't like that single joint. It's just, it's weird. It feels weirdly flimsy as well. I was a little afraid I was gonna break it the first time I tried to move it. In fact, I also did have to soften up his right arm when I first got him out of the package because it was frozen with the paint job. So again, uh, if you ever get that, I made a whole video on it, but just heat it up a little bit, hot water, hair dryer on low, I mean, it'll soften up the plastic so you can just kind of gently move it. But the lower half of this figure was such a disappointment. I am going to drop it to a half point for articulation. Next we have paint, sculpt, and detail. Number one, from the head, it's kind of standard Knight of Ren helmet. It's a little Vader-esque. The front does have that grenade look that I talked about earlier. It's got the silver paint on there. It's got a lot of molded detail. Uh, it has kind of a lighter gray line on the back of his helmet. His chest has a normal chest underneath, but it's covered with this rubber material to really kind of show off the, the detail in that. So there could be some detail under it, but you wouldn't know because there's no way to get that off. But it looks nice and it kind of feels nice. I like the little squishy feel of it. It has a lot of molded detail in there, but it also has some paint on there to make it look like he's been hanging out in the desert. His arm, uh, is sculpted with that same material, but not rubbery. And it goes down into his arm guard. There's absolutely no paint on either arm that I can see. I do have to say the sculpt on the arm is a little weird. It looks like it's constantly bent like this. I don't know why they chose to do that. The way it's sculpted, it just doesn't look right. I don't know. It looks like he's got rickets, but of the arm. Is that a thing? The sculpt and the skirt below, again, it looks good. Uh, it does have a little dirt kind of painted on the bottom of the skirt like it's been, you know, dirty. Again, though, I would have preferred that soft goods that I talked about earlier. It really does kind of 
hinder a lot of things and I feel like soft goods would have been a better choice. He does have some silver on the belt part, which is nice. His pants are fine. They've got some molded detail around the knees and legs. And then his boots are just caked in sand. And that's fine if you want to put him on like a desert kind of playset thing. But basically he's always going to look dirty. Whereas I don't think he really hangs out on like Kylo Ren's Star Destroyer with just dirty shoes everywhere. So I'm gonna give the paint and sculpt again, kind of a half point. There are just some things on there that just kind of drag it down for me personally. Lastly, the want and availability. And yeah, the want is there. Ever since 2015 came and we saw The Force Awakens and the whole Knights of Ren were like, ooh, what are they? Are they gonna be cool? And then, you know, we didn't really get an answer to that. We thought, next movie. And then as much as I like The Last Jedi, I know that's not a popular opinion to some people on the internet. I like it, but one of the very valid critiques for it is Ryan Johnson, like, come on. Where were these guys? They just kind of talked them up and they didn't do anything with them. Like, eh, come on. So when I saw them in promotional material for The Rise of Skywalker, again, I was very excited to find out more about the Knights of Ren. And then, you know, we didn't really get it, but they were in the movie, unlike the last two movies where they we weren't really in the movie. But I do think they look cool. Knights of Ren. Cool. In terms of availability, he's number 105 in the line. It's just kind of a normal release figure, so you should be able to find him anywhere. Maybe not out in toy stores, I don't know, but you can definitely get him online. I got mine from Dorkside with the rest of the wave. So I don't know, I mean, do your best to find him, but probably online can be your best bet. So without really any negatives here, I'm gonna give it the full point. I wanted it and I found it. So with all that being said, I'm gonna give it a 3.75 out of five. It definitely has some significant flaws, but I'm not gonna let that get me down on this figure. I still want it, and not just this one. It's imperative that I get the other six to fill out my ranks. Hasbro, you can't do this to me like you did with Bodhi Rook in Rogue One. I want the whole crew. Give me the whole crew, you gave me one. You can't give me one without committing. Commit, Hasbro, I'm talking to you. You're watching this, I know you are. The other five. And with that, that is my review for The Night of Ren. Let me know down in the downstairs area what you thought of it. Did you like it? Do you have it? You're not gonna get it? Just let me know. I like to read and respond to all of those. I also take a moment to thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon at a Black Series level or higher. It does go a long way of helping me out, especially in these uncertain times. If you'd like to see your name on this list, go ahead and check out my Patreon down in the downstairs area down below. If Patreon's not your thing, I totally get it. There's still a couple different ways down there that you can help out the channel. If you don't want to and you want to just do something free, you can like, share, and subscribe. I get that as well. And with that, that's it. Thanks for getting this far, and I'll see you later. Bye.